brace yourselves. This is a deep rabbit hole. The maths behind this might not be too difficult, but the actual concepts are incredibly dense. I'm not sure I fully understand it, but I will try my best to present it in a way that is understandable, whilst not oversimplifying the matter. If you do want to do your own research into these topics, I will link some resources in the description. So, the other day I was doing some very difficult integration revision questions. And it got me thinking. We use derivatives and integrals a lot, not just in maths, but also physics. Sitting in class with crazy functions like this, and concepts like product rule, chain rule, integration by parts, substitution, it can all get overwhelming. In that feeling, you can tend to forget the importance and strange beauty of the actual calculations. These derivatives and integrals are not just the work of some spiteful teachers who love watching their students suffer. No, we use calculus in our everyday lives. If you haven't already, I would highly recommend Three Blue, One Brown series, The Essence of Calculus, as it truly conveys the remarkable simplicity of the idea and really makes you appreciate why it works. The most famous use of calculus generally is in its application in classical mechanics. With it, you can derive Newton's second law, force equals mass times acceleration, which is actually just a simplification of the equation that states force is the rate of change in momentum, mv. From this, you can just separate out the m and get force is m multiplied by the derivative of velocity with respect to time, which is just acceleration. We tend to say f equals ma because we assume that the mass is constant, but Newton didn't state his original law as f equals ma, and using his actual equation can provide you with the force when the mass and velocity are both variable. Differentiating mv with respect to t now leads to m dot v plus mv dot the dot just indicating the derivative of m and v respectively. mv dot is just ma, so we get m dot v plus ma. Using integration, you can also derive the famous SUVAT equations, like s equals ut plus a half at squared, v squared equals u squared plus 2as, v equals u plus at, etc. These equations can be written in different forms, often using x and y to denote directions, but they all mean the same thing. Well, they may change depending on the dimensions you are considering, but that's not the point of this video. Most people know that velocity is the derivative of displacement with respect to time, and acceleration is the derivative of velocity with respect to time. Likewise, going in the reverse, acceleration integrated with respect to time is velocity, and the integral of velocity is displacement. As I thought about this, I began to wonder, why stop there? Why not integrate further? Is there something special about displacement which means we cannot integrate further? Well, no. The function has no special property that prevents us from doing what we did with velocity and acceleration, so I sat down and integrated it. I really hope I did this right because I will look incredibly stupid if I failed at this simple integration, but taking the displacement to be s equals s0 plus v0 t plus a half a t squared where s0 is the initial displacement and v0 is the initial velocity, I got the integral of s respect to time as s0t plus a half v0t squared plus 1680 cubed, plus some constant, I don't know. I looked at it and thought, well, that's something. What is it? I mean, if we set it to zero, what does that represent? What does it describe? Seemingly nothing. It's just more maths with no actual purpose. So I consulted the internet and wow, was I wrong. This is a real thing. So let's talk about that. So the quantity that I had just derived is known as the absent or abscission. Their names being a combination of absence and displacement or absence and position. The best way to think about this quantity is to look at a graph. We know the properties of a velocity time graph. The gradient is the acceleration, and the area underneath, velocity multiplied by time, will give us the total distance travelled. When we integrate the velocity, this area under the graph is now plotted on the y-axis, and time remains on the x-axis. Now looking at our displacement time graph, the gradient is the velocity, whilst the area underneath is the absent. Consequently, absent has the SI unit meter seconds, not to be confused with meters per second or milliseconds. So, 
What is a metre second? Well, from the definition of its unit, it represents an object being displaced by one metre for one second of time passing. Not very helpful. That can easily be confused with metres per second from velocity. So now consider water in a pipe with a gate valve. If you open the gate of the gate valve with a rectangular cross section by one centimeter for 20 seconds, this will provide the same absement as opening it by 10 centimeters for two seconds. In both cases, the absement is 20 centimeter seconds. Now the amount of water that leaked out is linearly proportional to the absement of the gate. So in both instances, the amount of water is the same. Now another example. Imagine you are on a 100 km car journey. You are driving in a straight line away from your house to your destination. Once you reach there, you stay at the destination for 10 hours before driving back to your home. It is your lucky day. You are being paid for this drive and stay. You are paid at a rate of one pound per kilometer per hour. Let's consider a simple scenario so that this rate has linear relationship to distance. So one pound per hour when you are one kilometer away, five pound per hour when you are five kilometers away, eight pound 96 when you are 8.96 kilometers away, etc. It takes you 10 hours to get there. You stay for 10 hours and take you 10 hours to get back. The total wage you are paid is 2000 pounds because the absent is 2000 kilometer hours. In the first 10 hours, your absent is 500 kilometer hours. During the 10 kilometer stay, your absent is 1000 kilometer hours. And on your return trip, the absent is another 500 kilometer hours, totaling to the aforementioned absent and corresponding wage. This can also be illustrated on a displacement time graph. Now the absent is the area under the graph. Calculating this area is calculating the area of the trapezium. The two parallel sides are 10 and 30, and the height is 100, so plugging it into that formula gets you an absent of 2000 once again. Hopefully this visual example helps you better grasp this concept. We can also plot a velocity time graph that looks something like this but that is not too helpful for our purposes. That's all well and good, but does anyone actually use absent? Well, surprisingly, it is useful. Consider a rocket whose fuel rate is proportional to the position of the throttle lever. The amount of fuel that is consumed is proportional to the lever's absent. This holds true in other scenarios. The rate of change or derivative of a quantity is proportional to an object's displacement, the quantity itself is a linear function of an object's absent. Less practical, but far more cool in my opinion, is an instrument that uses absent called the hydrolophone. Basically a piano, but instead of keys, there are holes that shoot jets of water. Now, initially when researching it, I was skeptical. I mean, I have a shower at home. It is not the same thing, but it actually sounds amazing. There are lots of experts playing the instrument here on YouTube if you want to hear for yourself. But these instruments are a good example of using absent. The first paper ever published on the topic of absent actually introduced it as a means of studying flow-based musical instruments like the hydrolophone. In particular, the paper suggested analyzing and modeling observations that had been made when playing a hydrolophone. The longer a jet of water was obstructed, the greater the buildup in the level of sound, as water accumulated in a reservoir up to a certain maximum capacity, corresponding to a maximum sound level. If water overflows this level, the sound level begins to fall off. Back to more practical uses, absent has been used to model artificial muscles, as well as for examining the way real muscles interact in the context of fitness. In kinesiology, Absent models muscle bandwidth, essentially the energy required to perform certain physically demanding activities. This field of study has given rise to a new quantity called actergy, which shares a relation between energy as energy does to power. The units of this terribly named quantity are the same as the units of action, dual seconds. From the units, it is clear to see that it is the integral of the total energy with respect to time. Absent is used in modeling fluid dynamics. It can also be seen as an analog to electric charge. Absent in this context is the integral of charge with respect to time. This is helpful in modeling computer parts like memory elements. Originally, this is where I was going to end the video. I had looked into some weird idea of mine and found out that it was actually a real thing with a real useful application. 
But then I discovered something. Something that turned this from a quick fun idea to a nightmare project. Of course, people hadn't just integrated once. They had integrated seven times. Furthermore, they didn't just stop at acceleration, they've differentiated six more times. I don't have the mental faculty to elaborate on each of these quantities in the detail I just did with Absolute, so I'm going to whiz through them. The general idea, though, is that displacement is the zeroth derivative of itself with respect to time. There are eight higher order derivatives and seven lower order derivatives or integrals. Why stop at seven or eight? Because I don't know, they just got bored? Feel free to integrate or differentiate these quantities further if you want to discover some brand new quantities, but I must warn you, they will almost certainly be useless, so don't go parading on your discovery as is something groundbreaking. Here goes, starting with the derivatives first. Our first derivative is velocity, and our second is acceleration. We can skip these two as they are fairly easy to grasp, and if you've gotten this far into the video, you definitely know what they are. Jerk. <laughs> no, 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 I'm not, I'm not, I don't mean to insult you, no, 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 that's not, that's not the one thing. Jerk, that is just the name of the third derivative. Jerk is the rate of change of acceleration, and was presumably named by a seven-year-old who thought it would be funny to learn about a concept in science called jerk. It is sometimes also called jolt, but this can cause confusion as it is not related to electricity, so it's just normally called jerk. This quantity is measured in meters per second per second per second, and is actually probably the most useful out of the ones that are going to come next. That is a trend you will see. The further you integrate or differentiate, the less concrete these values become. Jerk is actually considered when designing roads, racetracks, and roller coasters. Designers need to limit the jerk experienced by a passenger or driver to ensure a smooth journey. Jerk is also critical in motion control. No, not your Wii remote, but controlling the motion of elevators and other such systems. Jerk needs to be limited to ensure that the elevator or system is comfortable and convenient. Finally, jerk is also important in rocket design. The thrust a rocket exerts is equal to its mass times acceleration, but the propellant is actually what provides this thrust. Thus, the mass of a rocket is constantly changing and so is the acceleration. Moving along to our fourth derivative, we have snap or jounce, measured in meters per second per second per second per second, or meters seconds to the minus four. Now we're getting to the point where practical applications are so obscure or non-existent. Snap may be helpful in the previously mentioned rocket example if the rate at which the propellant is ejected varies. Snap may be useful in modeling. Crackle or flounce is next. Yes, I know what you're thinking. And yes, it is obvious what the sixth derivative is going to be. We'll get there soon enough. Crackle. I, I, it's useless. If I'm being honest, I couldn't find anything. This is what people think differentiation is, just long strings of variables. To be fair, the differentiation isn't actually that difficult, in this case, just pointless. I guess if the rate at which the rate at which the fuel was ejected varied, then maybe it could be used. Crackle is measured in meters per second per second per second per second per second, or meter seconds to the minus five. Finishing the trinity and differentiation section, we have pop or pounce. Being the sixth derivative, it is measured in meters per second per second per second per second per second per second or meter seconds to the minus six. Outside of serial, snap, crackle and pop are unnecessary and just maths. These last three are sometimes used, but often jokingly, hence being named after serial mascots. There are two more, called lock and drop, but honestly, I am this close to dropping off. So I am not bothering to delve deeper than saying that they are the 7th and 8th derivatives. In my defense, there isn't much more to them than that. Oh god, I just realized I'm not done. I still have the rest of the integrals. Well, here we go. So, absolutely is the second integral of displacement, or the first integral of absolute, and is actually useful. Consider a vehicle, the displacement of the accelerator, or gas pedal for any Americans watching, is proportional to the acceleration of the vehicle. Assuming, of course, no resistance or friction. The absence of this pedal is proportional to the vehicle's velocity. 
whilst the absity is proportional to the vehicle's displacement. Also, let us return to our new favourite instrument, the hydrolophone. Certain versions consist of cascaded hydrolophonic mechanisms. These mechanisms result in a double integrating effect. The hydrolophone is linked indirectly to the instrument's northern pipes, meaning water in direct contact with a musician's finger is not the same as the water in the organ pipes. This means that the instrument doesn't respond to the abstinent, like most hydrolophones, but to the absentee. Absity is measured in meter second seconds or meter second squared. Luckily for me, that was the last one that required much detail, so we can just accelerate through these last five. Abceleration is the third integral, and I looked, there seems to be no practical use for this quantity. Go figure. It is measured in meter seconds, 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 or meter seconds cubed. Abzerk is next. Measured in meter second 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 seconds or meter seconds to the power four. Again, it is redundant. Ab snap or ab sounds is next. It is measured in meter second 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 seconds. <sighs> what is this? Ab sackle and ab sop. There, I'm done. No, I'm not saying those units. You know what they are. They're on screen now. There might also exist something like abs lock or an abs drop to correspond with lock and drop, but I couldn't find anything about them. Oh, oh, I just got it. Pop, lock and drop. Oh, that's actually clever and kind of funny. The pop is the punchline up to the first joke with the serial mascots and is the setup to the next. But I am seriously done. I mean, there's a concept called placement the reciprocal of displacement, and its integrals like present, present t, and preceleration. Oh, and I guess there's also the derivatives of momentum, as mentioned at the start of the video, being force, yank, tug, snatch, and shake. You could also integrate momentum to get kinetic energy. Maybe you could integrate kinetic energy further. No, 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 no. That is it. I am absolutely finished now. Those Units were so absurd, with so many of the higher and lower order derivatives describing concepts so abstract, they are useless, I'm sorry if it was difficult to absorb, I have put so much time into this, it was honestly abuse. I need to abstain from ever doing videos like this again. I now need to abscond, but thank you for watching.